Hey everybody, we're going to look at Philippians chapter 3 today. We're going to be look, looking at verses 1 through 11 today. Hopefully you've had a chance to look through Philippians chapter 1, look at those videos, read Philippians chapter 2, watch those videos, and so you're starting to get an understanding of what Paul is trying to say to everyone there in Philippi. Uh, in today's lesson, we're going to look at the first 11 verses. I'm not going to read these verses to you, so take a second, uh, pause the video, Go grab your Bible, read Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Come back, unpause the video, and we'll look at what Paul is talking about here. Okay, now hopefully you've had a chance to read the first 11 verses of Philippians chapter 3. Uh, one of the first things that you'll notice here is, is kind of how harsh Paul is in some of these words. I mean... He uses uh, some, some heavy, I'll call them words here. Uh, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of mutilation. Uh, some of the words in, in verse 2. I mean, he goes through and he doesn't hold anything back, to be honest with you, in these verses. So we want to look at what he's saying, why he may be using this type of uh, uh, language against them, why he's calling them some of the names that he's saying, and why he's giving the people of Philippi these warnings. But before we get into that, I want to go back to verse 1, and I want us to look at just uh, a few words there that really talk about the whole book of Philippians. He says, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord is what he is telling them. He's telling them to rejoice in God. So all the things he's told them up to this point, he's looking at him, he's going, but still rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in and what the Lord has done for you. And then he goes on, he says, for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. He, he's telling them, look, I've told you these things before. We've talked about this. We've seen these things, but I'm going to continue telling you. I'm going to continue letting you know these things to continue, one, encouraging you, two, continuing to teach you and letting you know about these things. And so he's saying rejoice, though. Rejoice because you have the Lord. Rejoice in all these things. Rejoice in what, the God, what God has done for you. Rejoice in your unity with each other. Rejoice in the Lord. It's the theme of this entire letter. And he wanted them to know that he is reminding them to rejoice, but also he's going to remind them of these things for their safety. He wants them to remain safe in the Lord. He wants them to not stray and not get carried away by false teachers and things like that. So he, he started out with some words here. Beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. This is a harsh reverent, uh, reference here. So in Philippi, there were some people causing trouble that were legalists. They, they, everything had to be by the law. A lot of several Jewish people there that were causing this trouble. And what they were saying is that it has to go by the, the law of the Jews. So they were telling uh, the, the people in Philippi that were Gentiles, non-Jewish people, they were telling them that you had to do this and this and this to become a Christian. You couldn't just accept Jesus Christ. You had to obey the laws of the Jewish people because G Jesus was the, the, the Jewish God or he was a Jewish person. So they were saying this. And so here he was, here's, Phil, here's uh, Paul coming in and saying, beware of the dogs. Now this was an attack on the Jewish people. This is the way the Jewish people will look at the Gentiles. And here Paul, a Jewish person himself, as we'll see later, uh, he comes in and he just attacks them. And so he tells them to beware of the Jewish people, beware of the dogs. This was an attack on them. Beware of evil workers, legalists who, who do evil by saying that uh, the God, Jesus Christ, wasn't good enough. And then he says something that many may find um, unfamiliar here. And he says, beware of, mut beware of the mutilation. And some of you may be going, what's he talking about with beware of the mutilation? I, I believe this is a harsh reference again, another reference back to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people believed that you had to be circumcised. And that God had, had told them this in the commandments that he had given to Abraham way back in the Old Testament. And they continued to practice this. But what they were doing is they were saying, you could not follow Jesus Christ. You could not become a Christian unless you were circumcised. And, and so Paul was saying, beware of this teaching. Beware of this mutilation. You do not have to be circumcised to accept Jesus Christ. You do not have to do this. Um, th a lot of these people weren't denying that Jesus was the Messiah or that his gospel was the power of salvation, but they were denying that it was the only thing you need in your life, as a lot of them were doing. And then Paul goes on to describe in some of these verses uh, um, that, that uh, you, you, know, you don't have to worry about being circumcised physically. Jesus Christ came and paid the price for us. 
And so then he goes on to talk about who he is a little bit. And we see him talk about that he was circumcised on the eighth day and the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin. And he goes on and he kind of gives his credentials to be this great Jewish person. He was a Pharisee, one of the most elite people in the Jewish society. And he was going, I'm all of these things. I am all of these things, but they mean nothing without Jesus Christ is what he's saying in these verses. He's saying you could have the highest pedigree you wanted to have. You could be the most fluent doctrinal teacher or whatever you want to be in the world today, but if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. And that's what he was telling them here. He's like, I have all these credentials to be this Pharisee, this uh, high-ranking Jewish person, but without Jesus, I have nothing nothing but the things which were gained to me these i have counted lost for christ verse 7 yet indeed i also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord from whom i have suffered the loss of all things count them as rubbish listen to these words count them as rubbish that i may gain christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that through that which is through faith in christ the righteousness which is from god by faith So Paul is telling them here, look, the Jewish people say you have to obey the law. You have to follow the law to the T. You follow it to the T, there's a chance for salvation. Paul's looking at them here and he's going, all that is rubbish. I may gain Christ not on what I can do, but that I may gain Christ on what he has already done for me. This is a big lesson for all of us in our lives. You see, many times... Most of the time, we try to figure out what we need to do to gain salvation. How can I pray harder? How can I pray better? How can I use bigger words? How can I study the Bible more? How can I let people know I study the Bible more? How can I make it look good to other people? How can I look good to God? How can I do more? And if I do enough, then my salvation is secure. Paul's looking at us here and he's saying, it's not by my righteousness, it's through the righteousness of God that I may, verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. See, it's Jesus Christ that has died for our salvation. Nothing that I do, nothing that you do, nothing that I can do for you, but what Jesus Christ has already done for you. Paul was telling them, be careful. Watch out, there's a world full of wolves in sheep's clothing out there and they want to destroy you and teach you false teachings. It's the same in our world today. I can't tell you how many religions there are in the world today that take a little bit of truth in the Bible, twist it and turn it and turn it into something that fits their lifestyle or their needs and they call it a religion. They call it a Christian religion and it's as far away from the truth as it can be. So I encourage you to continue studying. I continue to con- I encourage you to continue reading and praying to God, not so that your salvation can be won, not so that your salvation can be earned, but so that you can understand what it is that Jesus Christ has done for you, so that you can understand when false teachers come in and begin teaching you. Study the Bible and understand it, not so that you can have salvation by doing that, but that you can have knowledge of the one who can give you salvation through Jesus Christ. Once again, as Paul said, I'll teach you these things over and over. It's not tedious. It is for your own safety. It's the same way with us today. We want to let you know out there that Jesus Christ loves you and we'll say it over and over and over again as much as we need to to let you know that He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to salvation through Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul was trying to say. You can have the greatest pedigree, you can have the greatest of everything, but it says nothing if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. So look at the Bible, study it, and understand who Jesus is and what he has done for you today.